What's up everybody, Brian Tong here at WWDC 25 with, yes, another video. Now, we have spent a lot of time inside Apple Park. I actually got a chance to now finally get hands-on with all the OS's that Apple announced. So what we're gonna focus in on this video is Mac OS and Watch OS and my impressions from everything that I experienced. So first up, let's talk about it. We're not gonna dive too deep into liquid glass because how many more times can we say that? But yes, a new design. We did see a little bit more here, customization of the icons and the dock bar. So what you can do is obviously go into your settings and you have a few different things. This is very reminiscent of iOS and some of the things that you can play with. We were able to tint the icons and the dock and really across the OS, a blue color. There's actually a more of a light version and a dark version of these tints. And then also if you wanna see what the standard icons look like in a dark version, we were able to get that, but they still flow. You have the dock on the bottom that looks more like a piece of glass that the icons are resting on top of. And then finally, I guess if you really wanna lean into this whole glass idea, it kinda can be a little hard to distinguish which icons are what, but a clear version of all the icons is another option. I know this may not be a groundbreaking feature, but a feature that matters for me, being able to now color, actually physically color your folders, not have that little dot tag on it. So yes, we turn this folder into red. This is all done in the finder and you can customize it. And then now you can also put either symbols or emojis on here. This is a disco ball on a red folder. And what makes it cool is if you've seen in the past on the finder, you can actually search for some of the tags you have. If I click on the color red in the column, all the folders that I've made red will appear. Control center does look classy. I do like the glass look here. It is still just as customizable. Pull up different things that you want. For example, here we dropped in the quick note option, just drag and drop it in. You see uh, the specular highlights, the edges of the glass glow. I think it actually looks really nice here in Mac OS. Now they aren't really reinventing the wheel here with Mac OS. I should, I forgot Mac OS Tahoe or Mac OS 26 for those of you who watched the meeting and said, hey Brian, it's Tahoe, it's 26, yes. We all know that. But, Apple's trying to maybe change how some of us might actually use our Mac because there is a real big focus here on the spotlight bar and almost creating a workflow or at least the way you use computer to do less point and clicking and just directly do things from the spotlight bar. So that's always been pulled up when you hit command and space bar. We've seen that spotlight before. I've always loved it because it can really dig into and surface the files that I want to find. But now here, there's a few different things that you can do. There's options in a new flowy animation where you see something like access to your apps. So you'll see them here all pop up in a window. You can also directly jump into the finder. That is where we find files. But then let's go over here to actions. This is where we can do things like instead of opening the messages app, then clicking on a contact and sending a message, we can start just sending a message directly to someone from Spotlight. That really makes things faster, easier to get to. I don't know how often I'm gonna be using this, but I think that it really speeds up how I use my computer. And that's what Apple is trying to have us kind of lean into Spotlight a little more than we ever have before. So no more pointing and clicking to navigate your computer the traditional way. Spotlight is where Apple wants us to go. I think that's pretty interesting there. Also, we have a clipboard history. We know that you can copy and paste across devices in the ecosystem, but here now we get access to previous things that we've copied that we want to use later. I've run into that problem in the past in Mac OS, on iOS. Now I can see maybe like the past five to 10 things. I believe it's over around the last 24 hours of things I've copied on that clipboard and I can use them wherever I want. And then some new continuity features here or just how they work in Mac OS Tahoe. We know that the menu bar, right, that physical bar is completely gone. It's just clear, but you do see icons. We can see live activities that are happening from our phone up in that top bar. This is a flight information, right? I'm gonna click on that. And then what happens is we will have continuity show our phone on our Mac, which has been done before, but you jump right directly to what your phone sees, see that flight path in the app. And so just a way where live activities on a Mac is talking more directly to your phone, some really cool continuity stuff. So overall, nothing that is going to you know, be earth shattering with macOS improvements here and there for people that use this on a daily basis. I like what I've seen. I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid. This makes my life and my workflow more effective. I think though, I do want to touch on liquid glass for a second because how many times have we seen in the comments, oh, this looks like Windows Vista and Arrow. And yes, look, everything is inspired off of each other. They did introduce that translucent glassiness, but this is different. Windows Arrow design, versus liquid glass, it's totally different from a standpoint of how it interacts and moves and has more organic feel. So everyone is inspired by everyone, but 
You all got to just like chill out. Use it first and then be like, is it the same? It's not the same. All right, let's jump over now to watch OS. Probably out of all the OSs that we saw, the least significant changes. They did have changes, but not as, not as major. So yes, the liquid glass look. I do like, you know, the watch faces with the changing of the different wallpapers and how the time adapts. Okay, that's a nice subtle feature. You do have control center that showcases the liquid glass with those highlights around it. Okay, but it just isn't as impressive at seeing it in person on a smaller screen. It just doesn't stand out as much. Even with the smart stack, it just doesn't pop the same way, but that's okay. So let's talk about what Watch OS does. And I think they really lean into this new feature for people that are active called Workout Buddy. So the Workout app itself has now had a redesign where you're gonna be able to do a lot of different things. Pretty much look at the four corners and in each corner, it gives you a few different options. So on the top left, we're gonna stop there. That's where you have workout views. So you can actually change the workout watch faces, reorder them by priority of how you want this to display different types of information between those watch faces. That's all done in that top left corner. If we're gonna jump over to the top right corner on this watch face, this is where you can set out your workout goals, you can do pace settings, and also your race routes. That's all done in that space. Let's then go down to the bottom left-hand corner, and that is where you can control music and podcasts and what you listen to. So by default, it actually will select based on what you listen to and based on the workout you have, it'll automatically play different types of music, but you can manually set that to either be specific albums or artists or podcasts that you listen to. Now let's jump over to the bottom right. That is where all the workout buddy settings are. Now workout buddy, as Apple described it, this is uh, preset voices that motivate you or keep you updated with your metrics, maybe compared to previous workouts, how you're doing, new goals that you've hit. So in that corner, by default, it is set to be turned on. You can turn it off, but also you can set what type of alerts that you get. It can be anything from your pace, to your heart rate or your cadence, you get to select what that workout buddy says. For me, the voices didn't resonate. I don't know if I wanna hear a random voice constantly in my ear, always jumping in here and there. I kinda of prefer to be in my own zone and look at my watch face, but it is an option if you want it. Also, not sure if you saw this, but Apple is incorporating a little flick of the wrist with the Apple Watch. So what does that do? Think of it as just, just takes you a step back from where you are on the Apple Watch. So if I'm in the workout app, I do a flick of the wrist, that takes me back out to the actual apps. And if I do another flick of the wrist, that takes me to the home screen. So that's a, a little flick flick that you can do. Apple's also emphasizing how watch OS is actually smarter. And so I wanted to see that in action and how the smart stack can contextually know what you're doing, what actions you're taking, or maybe where you are. So for example here, I have an iPhone next to it. I open up the iPhone app. And if you look on the watch face on the outside of it, it's on the lock screen, you can see a little camera icon. So we're gonna click onto that camera icon on the Apple Watch. It's then gonna take us to our main screen where you see the smart stack and then hit on the camera control button, which then allows the Apple Watch to use the camera from the iPhone and take a picture from it. So this is an example of how, oh, I happen to have my phone ready to take a photo. Maybe I set it down. My Apple Watch will detect that in Watch OS. Another way that Watch OS 26 is a little smarter is how it communicates with the iPhone. So we know that if you have a message thread and you put a poll in there, that poll is gonna show up on your watch. If you have a background image that you made on your iPhone, that background image will also show in your message thread in Watch OS 26. And then things like if there's flight information, we have a United Airlines flight here, I can click on the Apple Watch and then it displays that information directly on the Apple Watch or or if I have something measured in inches and I wanna see a conversion, I can click on that and it shows me the different metric measurements. So after all my hands on, what are some of the takeaways from Mac OS Tahoe and then Watch OS 26? I feel like obviously these new features are not gonna blow anyone's minds, but if you're someone that uses these devices daily, if you're in the ecosystem, there's obviously a lot of benefits, even for people that are working out, I think they're gonna really like that workout app. If you don't, then it's not gonna benefit you and that's okay. Apple's really trying to make us maybe think a little different or use our Mac and leverage Spotlight more than they ever have before. Watch OS, some simplified improvements, but overall, yeah, do we want our products to get better? 
the biggest gap here is Apple intelligence. We want more intelligence features. We want Apple to deliver on personal context, but they outright said it's going to be within the next year for us to see that incorporated. So you can complain all you want about that, but the reality is that this is what we get. It's incremental and that's okay. And it makes my life, someone who's in the ecosystem, better. So we'll have more coverage of all the different OSs. I got more hands-on, deeper hands-on with iPad OS and iOS and maybe some vision OS stuff. Just stick on the channel because we got plenty more to go.